something you can't fix. If you can't fix what's broken, you'll, uh, you'll go instead. It's Jay and Adam. It's previewed. It's previewed. Fix it with Adam and Jay. Hey, peaches! Welcome to Fix It, where friends don't let friends fix pop culture alone. I'm Adam. And I'm Jay. And you're our listener. Hey there, listeners. Ho there, listeners. Do you know who Alan Quartermain is, listeners? (laughs) I don't. I never I I don't. That's right, everybody. It's time. We're we're starting up a, a national book club. I guess. Yeah. So everyone, uh, you know, it's like Oprah's book club, but legally mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And we're working in conjunction with Book It, so you'll get, all get Ooh, pizza. Free pizzas. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Look, if there It uh, works, man. Pizza Hut is a if Listeria is a Pizza Hut nation. I don't know oh. what to tell you. Yes, it is. Domino's and Papa John's. Sorry, get guys. out of here. Yep. Little Caesar, you're allowed in the targets, but other than that, good. Uh, you know what? <laughs> acceptable compromise. Yeah, acceptable compromise. Well, yeah. I guess those were in Kmart, so those weren't in targets. But you know what I mean. Kmart. Welcome to our podcast. Whatever. Fix it. <laughs> I'm Jay, that's Adam. You may know us from the wildly popular YouTube reaction channel previewed. Um, stop stop shrugging at that. Stop shrugging. I Keep positive uh, thinking. Uh, we are wait. I successful. We haven't reached my wildly yet. Yes. I, I well, I, I think it's just about setting your expectations properly. Anyways, well welcome to our podcast, Fix It. <laughs> Uh, where every week Adam and I take a piece of pop culture that maybe missed the mark, maybe didn't quite get there, maybe just has a guy with a leaf blower outside of his window. Hopefully you don't hear that. Oh, I don't hear anything at all. Oh, perfect. And we fix it. And today we are going to be fixing, uh, the, the wildly before it's time. Yeah, very much so. The Alan Moore comic adaptation. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Was this in 03? I want to I, I, I wanna say that it is. You know, I always think to look this up before we start. To pull uh, just a little bit of a Brian? Yeah, but that's why we have Brian, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Other than the fact that he owes us a blood it's debt. His, oh, it's 03. Yeah, it's 03. 03. Hell yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that era when they were trying, like, oh, comic books, huh? Comic books seem to be the way we're doing things? Hey, I got a comic book for you. Yeah, and it's a movie that I think if it had come out more recently, with a little bit more of a, a modern comic book adaptation sensibility, I think mm-hmm. it could have been, I think it could have been a home friggin' run. Yep. But I think a lot of this is actually not a terrible movie, but I think audiences were just like, we're not. This isn't a team what, up movie of. We're not sure what to do with this. Yeah. But also the movie came from, it seems like it came from a place like, you guys all read the comic, right? No. No, we did not. Mm -mm. We didn't. You guys all read books, right? You guys read books? You guys read damn books. These famous books? These are famous characters. And that's why it's legally required here in Listeria. You know, we got to have a literate populace. Mm -hmm. And we're all going to get, and everyone's going to gather around and have their government sanctioned donuts and coffee. And we're going to chit chat about the book. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone will be, will bring a legally required babka of some kind. I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm not, I'm not saying how you do your book club, but that's how I do mine. Bunch of babka. It's a, it's a babka feast. Anyways, before we get into fixing a league of extraordinary gentlemen, uh, we've come to everyone's absolute most favorite segment. We took a poll. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really put some stank on that one. You did. Um, it's roll for convo. And in roll for convo, uh, Adam and I, uh, we have a list of twenty topics of conversation that our wonderful producer Brian, who knows what he did, but per, uh, he provided us all these topics of conversation. I'm going to roll a 20-sided die to figure out what our first segment is going to be about. Here's the roll. And that, sir, is my favorite number, 12. 12! Oh. Oh. That's 12 needs to, we need to re-roll. Oh. 12 is the riddle one. Th- I thought that was 13. No, 12 is the riddle one. Oh, we got to do that. We got. We have to coordinate that with Brian. It was thirteen last time. What happened? Well, well, everything moved up. 
Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. And I'm rolling a 20-sided die right now, and that is a natural 20! Okay. What is something your mother, father, or sibling often does that you find yourself doing? What is something you picked up from your significant other? Anything goes in, oh no, I'm turning into insert person talk. Insert person. Um, Have you picked up traits? Oh yeah, dude. From your parents, your siblings, or Kimberly? Um, I I am turning into my mother. I talk oh my god, just like my mom. Really? Like when it comes to especially, and I'm and I I, I already started noticing it, but like especially now that we're raising a son, mm-hmm. like I am finding myself talking to him like she talked to me. In that, like, a lot, it's just, it, and there's no, I don't have a ton of specific, okay. like, it's just, why do you, why do you assume it's, why do you assume it's a bad thing? Why do you assume it's bad? You give me a I'm, I'm just wondering no, what, just a what your example thing. is. No, like, I, I, I talk like, I talk like my mom. And do you really? I, I behave like my mom. And I really? get my, and I get, I think my, um, my emotional side from my mom. Oh, that's not true. My dad's. My, both of my parents are pretty emotionally present. Okay. Uh, people. But, but she like, does that uh, thing that you do when, when you talk about James. Oh, absolutely. You're- Specifically, I. Uh, my mom oftentimes refers to me as my first, my first and last name, James Richard, and so I call him James Richard almost exclusively. Sure. Um, there's also. Uh, yeah, there's just little. Um, but she does the voice. What what voice? Dude, you do a voice. When you, you specifically start talking about your son, you do a voice. You the, the normal voice that you were talking in right now disappears and it gets I don't know. I can I don't know how to do it because it's clear, well, it's very much a you thing and it's like your voice gets sucked back into your mouth. Two things. Yes, that's my mom. That is your mom. Yeah. Your mom talked like that to you? Oh yeah. All the time. Oh, huh. my oh, my sweet boy. No, no, um, that's not it. Can you do an impersonation of it for you? You brought, you brought it to the table, so I, I, need, did, you to tr- I, I need you to try. I did. I did. I'm so uh, sorry, but, but that's the but law of podcasting. I, I can't, dude, I can't do it. I can't do it. Because this is, I, I, even my attempt of doing it is going to just, it's so wild. I don't do impressions for a reason. Just... Because you sound... Try. You, you, you sound... <laughs> it, you, but you sound like a five-year-old. Peach Thulu demands you sound like a tribute. five-year-old I, sound like I don't five-year-old. know i don't know how to make the sound in my head come out my mouth no he's just a sweet boy no he's a little a bit more no put boy. some more stank on that he's just a sweet boy keep he's talking just a sweet, he's a boys i don't like that i'm doing an impersonation of myself you are that but he's it's a li- sweet sweet boy with his little hat and his little there it is a little, okay. a little hat a little, a little hat everything a little hat that's what it is today. it gets he everything like it. all your enunciation gets real soft yeah. And very smooth. He wears like a little hat. And he's a cute little guy. He's, he's just the best he's little the guy. Best little thing. He makes it. He's kind. I, Adam, I am so down. But everything's so totally worth it. Okay. And I'm so happy. And I was like, <laughs> it's like I, I'm, I, I've been around you long enough. So like, I understand what you're saying. But like, if there were strangers here, I feel like they'd have like a... No, that's... But what did he just say? I don't know if that's totally my mom. That's, that's my... Uh... Cause it doesn't. Uh, yeah, that's why I was like, wait a second, what? That, Cause that sounds like a, a Jay Schmidt original. Yeah, but it is weird. Um, uh, it is weird how uh, my, I have the exact same voice as my dad. Okay. And my brother, so it's weird when like I I have like uh, uh, you know what I got from my mom? Golly, golly. It's a lot of like a lot of like uh, ex- exclamations and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have my dad's voice, but I talk like my mom, which is weird. Um, That's weird. Yeah, could be worse. What What about you? Uh, I'm wholly a separate person from everything. I am I am singular unto the world, Jay. Here's the thing. I want to uh, I need to spend more time with your parents because I know you're wrong. And 
that's you know it's there's that's just not how like growing up works sure uh do you know what i do notice though was that jay do you know you know who you, you know you know who is the biggest influence in the way you talk and the phrases you speak yes jay i do know <laughs> it's you. me it's you <laughs> <laughs> You start, man, I, like you, the, the amount of things that I say that you have just started, like, it just, it's just casually slip into ca- conversation. The first prime example of that was Nanner Boats, because I remember you said Nanner Boats in a video, and everyone was like, I love it when Adam says Nanner Boats, and I was like, he says Nanner Boats because I say Nanner Boats! <laughs> you know, no! <laughs> I'm the one with the whimsy! He's just <laughs> borrowing my whimsy! <laughs> You may start it, but I'm the one selling it, baby! <laughs> and how. And how. Um, yeah, no, I have my dad's laugh. Yeah. That's just that's just how DNA works, man. That's yeah. just that's nature slash nurture mm-hmm. in its purest and like that's in its purest form. Do you and like do you think do you and Amanda have you guys like uh, like rubbed off on each other? Um no, because she puns a lot, and we fall into roles with that. Because she she'll make a pun, and then I'll be just like, "That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard," yeah, and I do not really sanction this. Puns. And I was like, no, "Absolutely not." Um. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. We don't really. No, because we're su- we're two very different people. Yeah. And especially like just how we both operate. So like. Uh, and I haven't picked up too many mannerisms, or not mannerisms, but, like, her verbiage doesn't really jive with how I normally speak. Whereas, like, you and I, in, in the, in the bippin' and the bappin' and the, the silly things or whatever. Sure. Yeah. Well, the stuff that she came into this relationship with hasn't really stuck around. Interesting. Yeah. So you're, you're saying you're the constant? Yeah. 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 That's fair. That's fair. Kimberly and I like our our both of our colloquialisms have like completely mashed into one another. Hmm. But Kimberly also finds herself completely exasperated by all of I use a lot of folksy turns of phrases. Yes, you and, do. And uh what's what's the, like the correct word like uh like turn yeah, I guess just turns of phrase. Yeah, turn of phrase. Um, yeah. And uh but as much as she it frustrates her they have started to like worm their way into. Oh, uh, yeah. She used to give me so much guff for saying, "Well, as the crow flies, this is blah blah blah." And she's like, "Can you not talk like you actively have a banjo in your hands?" <laughs> like, <laughs> she's like, "When was the last time you saw a crow here?" And I was like, "I don't." My, my wife a has a tendency to get caught up in the in the nitty gritty semantics of specificity mm-hmm. in a way that drives me up a tree. Yeah, English has a lot of words, so we can be specific about things. Sure, sure, but it's, sometimes it's not about necessarily what you're saying; it's how you're saying it and the, the attitude. You uh-huh. can under you can understand someone what someone means just by cadence alone, Lashy. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh huh, yeah, you know, yeah. I think I'm wildly understandable. Sure, sure, yeah, man. You yeah. you use language as like a, like a watercolor brush. It's all just very smooth. Everything kind of blends in with each other. You just have to get the feel of the the scenic view. Kimberly and I are like, no, no, we're gonna draw this with specific lines. Yeah. Look at the shading. Look at the text. Look, it's so it's an amazing. It's yeah, all it linear. Exactly... We use we use words specifically. And that's how that's how my brain works too. Mm-hmm. I see in color, yeah, like in my head, and it's mm-hmm. watercolors, which is weird that you pointed that out because that's exactly how I see. That's how I read vibes is color. Huh. Hmm. 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 That's fun. Yeah. So we're the taste makers, I guess, is what you're trying. What we're trying to say, pretty much. You know, the amount of things that we say. You know, yeah, we rub off on people. People don't rub off on us. Well, 
This has been Roll for Con. Stop staring into the camera like a psycho. I'm trying <laughs> to not laugh. <laughs> I know what I said, but in context, that was the correct thing to say. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> We should move on to the League of Legends. We should. Oh, boy. Ooh. Mm. Um, <laughs> that's been Roll for Convo. Uh, just, yep. <laughs> Completely derailed. Um, but before we get into uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, we should probably hear from our producer, Brian, and everything he has to tell us about the spectacular film. In everyone's absolute most favorite segment, we took a poll. <laughs> when Brian rolls that beautiful bean fun fact footage. Thank you, gentlemen. Producer Brian here. And today we're trying to fix the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Released in 2003, it was directed by Stephen Norrington and adapted by James Dale Robinson from the Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill comic. It stars Sean Connery, Shane West, Nasir Rudin Shah, Peter Wilson, Stuart Townsend, and more. Here are some fun bean facts. The studio couldn't get the rights to The Invisible Man, so they changed the character's name, and in the script he's referred to as An Invisible Man. Connery agreed to take on this role because he had previously turned down The Architect in the Matrix trilogy and Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which cost him over $450 million. He was paid $17 million for this movie. This movie is often cited as why Connery retired from acting. It caused him an outrageous amount of stress, especially when he spent the time and effort trying to help salvage it in editing. Alas, it cost $78 million to make and made $179.3 million. It was universally panned, and if you care, it has a 17% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 2.5 out of 5 on Letterboxd. Anyway, back to you, gentlemen, and please enjoy writing your fix. Thanks, Brian. Hi, Brian. Good job. Very well done, Brian. Very well done. Hope you're having a good summer. Good, good final summer before baby comes. And then everything, and then everything gets wildly more complicated. Mm -hmm. You can't just jet down to the shore. You gotta, you... Did you ever jet down to the shore, Jay? All the time. Jet? No, like jet, like as the term, not ah. necessarily like the, again, the, a perfect example of what we were just talking about. Yeah, you just jet down somewhere. I'll just jet, jet over there. You know? Mm -hmm. it, it means fast. Little Jay go fast? Little Jay go fast. Huh. Yeah. Um, huh, okay, so this movie. This movie. We should probably... Let yeah, people, for people who haven't seen this movie, we should probably do a very quick plot drop. I can do the plot drop. I can do. Sure, go drop. for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and everyone's absolutely most favorite segment. We took a poll. Uh, <laughs> it's a poll plot drop. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Uh, it's it is in the early 1900s. It is before World War One has broken out. We're kind of in a little bit of an alternate timeline in this place. Um, and uh, we have a, a supervillain called the Phantom, who apparently has a scarred face and a spooky mask and is a bit, a bit much, a bit over the top. Um, he is uh, attacking different countries and stealing their scientists in a way that feels like he is, the, what the people at large feel like he is trying to set off a world war. Um, what he's actually doing is trying to uh, get all these scientists to do research so he can build and amass an army and take over the world. Anyways, um, <clears throat> Alan Quartermain, who is a, a, a famous character from uh, literature. Uh, who is, do you know the name of the book? Um, he's uh, the King Solomon's Mine. That was one of his oh. books. He was like, he's like an adventurer if Sherlock, like, if Sherlock Holmes was an adventurer. Not necessarily mysteries, but like same idea. Okay. Um, cause I, because I was like, I don't know. If this wasn't Sean Connery, I'm not sure I'd really care at all. Yeah, I don't, um, yeah, I don't know. 
I think maybe you know when this when this comic book came out, maybe it was a more well known character. But when this movie came out, nobody knew who the hell he was. Um, <clears throat> but uh, uh, he is contacted uh, by British intelligence and is sent uh, to meet up with a character named M, uh, who is uh, trying to get back together the League of Extraordinarily or Extraordinary Gentlemen. Which is a, an organization that across time has, you know, special individuals that have come together to save the world. And so he is met up with uh, the, invi uh, the Invisible Man, or rather the thief who stole one of uh, some of his science at some point. Sure. Um, he is met up uh, with uh, a lady vampire. I can't remember her name to save my life. It was Mina. Mina, that's right. And apparently she is one of the characters from Dracula who didn't make it out, uh, which that was interesting. I thought that was cool. Um, we have uh, Captain Nemo of uh, League uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and we have uh, Dorian Gray, uh, the, the, famous, the famous painting man. Uh, and they all get together, and they uh, first have to go catch uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and set off to fight to stop the Phantom. Um, apparently, the Phantom has set up a series of bombs in Venice, and uh, you know they drive a submarine the size of the Empire State Building through the canals of Venice uh -huh. in ways that uh, do not make any mm. sense. Nope. Uh, ne I will say Nemo's submarine was cool as hell. That was sure. pretty neat. A lot of the effects were pretty neat. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, once they... Uh, once they stop the bombs and eventually find the phantom, uh, it uh, it comes to light that there has been there was a spy on board the submarine who has been stealing everything from all from all of our extraordinary extraordinary people. Um, oh, I forget. I, I forgive me. When they picked up Dorian Gray, a young uh, U.S. Uh, Secret Service agent, Tom Sawyer joins the crew. And, Remember <clears throat> Tom Sawyer, the, the Secret Service agent from literary? I history? thought that was I thought it was a fun touch. Um, sure. <clears throat> I mean, but also if you want American audiences to care, that's a character we all know. So get him in there. Yes, we do. Um, we do know Tom Sawyer as a twenty-something Secret Service agent. Yeah, but he's handsome. So he's we, a handsome we, guy. Pass him. And he uses my weapon of choice, the Winchester. It's <laughs> yeah, I think it's cool as hell. Uh, anyways, any hoozles. Uh, they stop uh, the Phantom in Venice, but it comes to light that uh, they have been betrayed. <gasps> they thought they had been betrayed by the Invisible Man, uh, but it turns out uh, that was a red herring for the audience, and it was indeed Dorian Gray. The oh Phantom. my god! <clears throat> the Phantom, um, uh, uh, the Phantom uh, had hired Dorian Gray by stealing his painting and blackmailing him into mm -hmm. betraying everyone else to get. Mina's blood and a skin sample of the Invisible Man and uh, Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde's uh, uh, potion formula. Yeah, and Quartermain was just involved because they knew he would be able to catch uh, Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Uh, and once they stop him in Venice, uh, it comes to light that the Phantom is actually a ruse, and it is they have been betrayed by M. The oh my God! Hired them in the first place. No. <clears throat> And he has rigged the sub to explode. Bum, bum, bum. Wow. <clears throat> they survive it by Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde uh, pulling a 180 and actually saving the day. And it seems like uh, Dr. Hyde has gotten, or Dr. Jekyll has gotten a, a hold of Hyde to some degree. Um, Professor Hulk, basically. Professor Hulk. He is Professor Hulk. Um, and they uh, fix up the submarine and head to Mongolia to defeat... Uh, M, and you know through a series of hijinks and whatnot, uh, they defeat M. It is it comes to light that M is actual James Moriarty. Oh my God! The twists <clears throat> don't stop. Bo -bo -bo. The Sherlock, the Sherlock Holmes mastermind. Oh my God! Oh my God! Um, and that's it's not informed the, to the audience what franchise he's from when that happens. We're just nope. supposed to know. Yep. And that's another mistake this movie makes. Well, um, if I had when I saw this in 2003, I didn't know who that was. Nope. Uh, I know now because we had the Benedict Cumberbatch ones, and that's uh -huh. really the only reason we know that. Um, 
But uh, they saved the day. But Alan Quartermain is killed. Oh, no. He is buried in Africa. And it was, legend had it that Africa wouldn't let him die. And so it is implied that he will be back for the next movie that never happened. Nope. That's the movie. I mean, like, that's the movie. Pretty much. Um, Pretty much. It's pretty simple. Yeah, I mean, it, well, for simple for us in 2024, it's an Avengers film. Yeah. It's Avengers. Yeah. But, you know, with just characters you don't know about or care about. I mean, there are certain... I, I don't know. I mean, I, we and, just rewatched this movie, and mm-hmm. I I had a good time. I actually really liked it. Sure, so did I. I, I, may, I. I may be putting too much stank on the we don't care about them. In mm. that we don't care about them because these characters are no longer popular. They're not no. in the subconscious of pop culture. I would I would argue so, like, that I would argue that a Dracula character makes sense. I would argue that uh, the Invisible Man is pretty timeless. Sure, uh, but like I would, I would argue that uh, Captain Nemo of a uh, Twenty Thousand Leagues is real. I mean, the character is not iconic, but the submarine and the concept is. But that's it. Only by but it's just surface level. Yeah. You don't know anything about these characters. And there's really... They they do try to have some time given to, like, to know these people a little bit. Yes. But, like, ultimately, the movie's only 100 minutes. Yeah. So, like... Well, that's the thing about this movie. And one of the things I walked away... If we're just, like... If we're getting into the film now. Like, the good of this movie, I think they do... Like, for the time period in which this movie came out... Mm-hmm. I think they actually did a lot of work into developing who these people are mm-hmm. and like their relationships mm-hmm. and like filling out the backstories of a mm-hmm. lot of these characters. And like, yeah. I, I don't think they necessarily like, I think a lot, like I was really interested in all was like what was going on with Nemo. But I think that a lot of that hit the editing room floor, which is fine. Um, but it was just interesting I think they did a really nice job of like they could have they could have painted with a broader brush, but they they attempted to like like paint out some details here. <clears throat> now the manner in which they did it mm-hmm. is it was so disjointed and all over the place, and information was not coming at the right time. Um, so that's frustrating, but it was nice to see. Sure. I mean, the action was good. It was based... This movie came out at the same time around the Underworld movies were coming out. And the Underworld oh, movies yeah. are great, you know, for what they are. You know, just vampire action films, you know, a la The Matrix. Cool. Great. There's some really good action scenes in this. The CG is fine for its time. Like, yeah. it still decently holds up well. It's not It's not all that terrible. We've seen a lot worse, especially from seen, that time period. We've seen I a mean, lot like, worse from that time period, yeah. I, I will say, I think that... Uh, the, a couple of things about the CG. I thought the do, the Doctor Hyde, uh, the uh, the Mister Hyde uh, mm-hmm. suit, like when it was a practical effect. I appreciate that they built a practical effect. Mm-hmm. It did look a little stupid. Uh, I thought that character design was a bit much. It was a bit Resident Evil for me, in sure. a way that make I guess is technically like, you know, biologically like feasible. In a well, way. it did kind of look like what was his name from Umbrella Academy. Sure, sure, but you could, you could. It was pretty clear that those his arms did not have any articulation, yeah. and that they were just like arm stilts. Mm-hmm. And I was like, he's yeah. just swinging those around. Those aren't like, uh, he that those are just basically big clubs on the end of his yeah. arm. He's a big old puppet right now. But and also like I thought when this when they. You could tell where they spent their money on their CG. And I think when they did spend their money on their CG, it was well worth it. Mm-hmm. The Invisible Man stuff, when he just like puts the paint on his face and is walking around, that's yeah. great. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, I just think it's like... And, and I think they pretty did, did a pretty decent job of... Uh, inc- it's hard to include an invisible character in, in, a, in a thing. Yep. I think they did a pretty decent job of integrating that into the story Mm -hmm. and you could i will say you could tell the moments where there was someone there in a green screen suit Mm -hmm. and when it was just uh you know sir sean connery just push like pushing Mm -hmm. uh, like miming pushing someone out of a door Mm -hmm. that wasn't there you could tell 
Um, but, like, I will say the twist of this movie, I think, is actually pretty good. Because we, we all just, like, I, we, I've seen this movie a bunch of times. Oh, and really? I was like, and it's been a minute. But I was like, oh, yeah, the, yeah the, the Invisible Man is bad. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, no. And that twist was actually pretty good. And he was like, yeah, I just you guys were all going to assume it was me. So I just dipped and followed these idiots. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I did assume it was you. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and know. it was in Dorian Gray being, he wasn't even really, he wasn't even really bad. He was just like, I just want my painting back. Yeah. It just, he, need, he was, well, was blackmailed. Yeah. yeah. So, ah, well, that was, that part was a little weird. But also, you can't. The thing is, is that like I feel like yeah, I feel like you could have painted his character to be a little bit more sympathetic. You could have painted his character. But also, that's that's the issue with Dorian Gray putting Dorian Gray in something, is that if you put him, uh, if you put Dorian Gray in a plot, you have to show the painting at some point. We have yep. to see it. Mm-hmm. We have. I have to see it. It, there's not it's not compelling to not um yeah i just think if I, it's funny i just i i i think if you just change the main character of this movie to a character that we all understand you can still keep it sean connery hell they could have just made sean connery an old sherlock holmes and it would have been and, and i think we're gucci i, I mean, honestly think it's that simple like that's a literary character we all know and love, mm-hmm. and like he's got more name recognition and is able to like come into the story with a lot of work already done. Mm-hmm. Unlike all these other characters, like we don't know anything about any of these people. So like when the Invisible Man dies, yeah, kind of randomly at the end, it's just like, oh, okay, am I sad? I don't think so. Oh no, Quartermain died. Uh, I don't care. Yeah, I don't know. The, I don't know these people. I don't yeah. care. Oh my God, yeah. Moriarty. Oh, okay. He didn't he? He thought he died over a waterfall. No, okay. I don't. Well, it just goes to sure. show because I was looking up like Quartermain and like those book series, and like they were like a they were a sensation. Like they were a big deal. Sure, um, sure. And it just goes to show, like, how difficult, like, maintaining legacy is. And, like, because, you know, like, Sherlock Holmes books are awesome. But if we didn't, if we didn't ha- continuously have pop culture references to him mm-hmm. and, like, you know, you know, AAA television programs featuring him in, like, new and interesting ways and mm-hmm. ways that reach new audiences, I'm not sure we'd ever be able to maintain any kind of like you, you think some of these things are timeless they're but not. they're not but they're not nope like you know the like dracula is an incredible book sure. it's an incredible book um but you know if they weren't making a dracula movie or a vampire movie like every couple of years now like do i think we would remember it yeah no i mean and we only know dracula and van helsing i guess sure but like, but Van Helsing's not... Wolverine now. You know what I mean? He mm-hmm. moved on to you know greener pastures, um, and it all comes. It's it's just so interesting how uh, these old books were like those. That was what comic books were before we had comic books. Yep. It's it's kind of the, and I almost miss, and it's kind of why I like the Dresden books so much. Uh, they they're they're a little pulpy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it feels like like pop culture novels isn't as common as it used to be, and I think we're worse off for it. I mean, yeah, like yeah. it's uh, you know we get our young adult thing, you know we get our Hunger Games every once in a while, our Harry Potter's yada yada yada. But a those are most I mean, and they're in the title, they're young adult. Um, it's hard to it's hard to like. Uh, get those like fantastical stories because I feel like a lot of the books that succeed now are like the Grisham stuff. That's like seal team six. This is real. Se-. I mean, I, I think you could sure. argue that Jack Ryan, the Jack is, Ryan stuff. Yeah. Hell, I mean, do a league extraordinary gentleman and just have it be Jack Ryan. You know what I mean? Like that's a character we know more. Well, I mean, I don't know if you noticed, but the, in, in the beginning of the movie, when Quartermain gets to England 
and meets M for the first time, and they're in that boardroom as yeah. a library type of thing. There are paintings along the wall with other teams of extraordinary gentlemen. Yes. All of those team makeups seem a lot more interesting than the one we got. <laughs> okay. Just is like, oh, is is that the four musketeers? Oh. Oh, cool. Who's you who are they with? Oh, is that Robin Hood? Like some just I don't yeah. know I don't know in in you know what time periods of literature and stuff like that, but like there are if you go back in history of the famous literary characters from, you know, way back in the day, you can, you know, people can list off like, oh yeah, I guess I mean, the, the Robin Hood, sure. Um, you know, the Musketeers, yeah. Joan of Arc, maybe, you know, like, you know, so the people that showed up in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Well, like, Joan of Arc was actually, yeah, I mean, Joan of Arc was actually a person, so. Sure, sure, sure. But like, you know, those those fables that have become tales. Yes. That are, you know, used now that are in, the, in public domain. And I feel like, and I know, it, and it, it falls into line with the fact that, like, this is an Alan Moore project. And, you know, Alan Moore, you know, there's only so much creative license you can take with this stuff. Um, when when you're working on something with him, like, he's pretty much, you know, you're tied down. Which is, like, more power to him. That's his right as the creator. If he wants to sell the rights with a bunch of strings attached, that's fine. But I also think, you know, you just, it's, I think when it comes down to it, like trans, like translating something for the screen is about, if you are the creative person, rather than tying someone down with a con, like with your stipulations in a contract, you just need to be really, really particular about who you're picking to make your thing. Mm -hmm. Because like, Hey, Hey, Alan Moore, you, you make comics and you're, um, and you're on the Mount Rushmore of comic making. That being said, you don't know how to make a movie, dude. Like, you don't. Nope. Like, and that's fine. You just need to find someone with your sensibility. They're going to have to change some stuff. Like, you know, and it's it's funny. I didn't used to be that way as a person. I used to be like, oh, they changed all these things. And I'm like, now, you know, now that we watch so much stuff and yeah. a lot of adaptations, like, we've had to make peace with the fact that, like, and we've seen some great examples of, like, yeah, they changed, like, The Last of Us, they had to change stuff. Oh, yeah. They had to change stuff. They're like, oh, can you believe what they did with all the Bill stuff? I'm like, yeah, because the Bill sequence was boring. It's fun video game, but right. it's not good TV. Right, exactly. And and this is a like, fun book, but like this isn't. This does not make for a great movie. I think this, like this property, could have benefited from the fact of of them being aware of the fact that there are books about them, and there being some kind of power in. Oh, okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I think you sure. also, if you're existing in that place, you open yourself up to a lot more characters. If you can kind of get a little, play a little fast and loose mm -hmm. as to like, uh, not just a one for one. These are their powers in the, in, in their books kind of thing, mm -hmm. but just like, Oh, they were able to do this in an inspired a book about them. Yeah. Kind of thing. Uh, Cause I have some, I have some silly ideas for characters that I kind of want to put. Oh, do you now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we just, should move on just, to the just some Just some workshop stuff. Okay. But that being, that being said, I like... A, Tom Sawyer needed a power. We he long was, shot He him. was super, superfluous to this, to this whole tale. Yeah, they just they needed an American real bad. I mean, he's in the comic book. He's oh, there. Oh, is he? Okay. He's there. Sure. Um... Yeah, I think we should move on to the fix. Probably. We've yeah, because be. yeah, because I mean, for me, the fix is pick better characters. Yeah, or augment your. Uh... Okay, I I I have like a list of like, uh, of what. Oh, I you think. have a list. Okay. Yeah, I you know it's funny. I've been th uh, since I watched this a couple days ago. I've really just been thinking about it a lot. Wow. Okay. Um, because I because I I did like this movie. Sure. Um, I think the biggest thing you can fix to do to fix this movie, if you're yeah. going to keep, if you, I don't think we're going to keep all out of these characters. No. Um, but I think if you have to keep all of these characters, mm -hmm. I think you, t and to reach an American audience, I think right. you make Tom the main character. Okay. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I think... I think you make Tom the main character, and he is 
um, like he is basically like inf- like he is sent. He might very well think that the like the concept of a league of extraordinary gentlemen is like maybe responsible for what's going on. Um, okay. Kind of thing or something to that effect. Well, he's the audience surrogate. He's a young kid from America. He doesn't know anything. The only yes. thing he's heard of these people is like just from tales that people have passed down. And I think if you, and I think if you have a bunch of characters talking about and describing Alan Quartermain more mm-hmm. before we actually meet him, I think we, as an audience, can get on board with it faster. Because okay. here's the thing. I love, like, I think they do a really nice job of world building that character. Like, okay. I love that he goes there and he's talking, like, he has one there just to, like, tell the stories. I think that's great. And also, can we just agree? Can we just agree? There is something about, like, a, an adventurer's lodge with, like, a... Like a a, b- a bar and like mm-hmm. you know like you you have to have a membership there but like it maybe is not like an official membership like you have to bring something you hunted or something sure you know that's mm-hmm. what an what a unique and fun thing that we just don't have anymore nope not or, really but it, it also got me thinking did those ever actually exist or is that just like a fun idea that people thought that like adventurers did I mean, it seems like, I mean, aren't, aren't they in a lot of different oh, movies from that time period have lodging in sure. bars but where much all the like, people who actually, you know, well, we've are, but here's the thing, Jay, we've like, we've explored the whole planet. Like, that's not, that we, is, that's not true. Well, I mean, we have the ocean. Yeah. The ocean. So like, but like for land, for the most part, like. We've kind of covered everything. We we know where basically everything is right now. Yeah. No one's really going out to adventure to new lands because like we kind of we can see them from space. Yeah, I know, but it. So like it's, that, the adventuring lodges doesn't doesn't need to exist anymore. I know, but it's just nice to the fellowship, you know. Sure, but uh, again, but yeah, but but I, my point is that that lodge idea needs that's to be much... around in the past because, but you know, it phased out because we that's something we don't really need anymore. Yeah. No one's really much... adventuring. I would say our Discord is like an adventurer's lounge. It is an yeah. adventurer's lounge. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I just think we're, we're missing out. But also, like, we can't conf- I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it would be difficult to confirm or deny if those actually existed, like, the way pop culture shows us. Hmm. It's like the, it's like the, uh, the televisions in the, in the shop window. Yes. In the news. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this is in everything, but I don't think we did that. But maybe we did. And maybe I just they did back confirm. in the day. Maybe. Probably. Back in know, the day. It's just... I just, you know, it would be nice to have a place to, it'd be, like, what a good third place, you know? Oh, okay. What a good okay. third place. Sure. I want to go sit in one of those, like, rust, one of those rustic leather chairs and smoke a cigar and drink a, drink a lukewarm beer and, re- and read the classics. Oh, okay. You know? Sure. Yeah. It sounds great. Right? Uh-huh. Anyway, what were we talking about? So you had a list of characters <laughs> that would be really cool oh, for this? okay. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I think, okay. There. Uh, so who do we want? Do we, are we just, are we giving Quartermain the boot? Who do we want to give the boot? Everybody gets the boot. Everybody gets the boot. We're just nope. building a fresh one? Yes. Well, in my in my eyes, yes, because none of these characters, I, 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 to make a successful movie... Sure. With the, the the concept is very interesting. Literary Avengers, cool. But all these characters, there's so many characters in the public domain. Okay, great. But like, we need to figure out who are the most popular pop culture literary heroes, and then put them in a movie. Yeah. Okay. The the lineup for this movie is a bunch of nobodies. Nowadays. Now, they had their time. People do remember them. But the audience right now has no idea who these people are. Yeah. So, like, maybe it was, you know, it's a clever comic book. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah, but nobody cares. I don't know. There's a a reason why he's a side character in all these movies. Okay. And also, we have a Hulk. So, like, nobody cares about about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde anymore because we have Hulk. 
Bruce yeah. Banner is way better. Okay. He's the strongest there is. So in my eyes, we just need to pick a better team. All right. The, the, a team that people know know and care more about. Sure. But like, what what but what were your what were your characters? Um. Okay. Well, I think I think we keep Sean Connery because he's an he's a what a tr- what a treasure. Sure. Um, I'm sure. I don't know. Did he get canceled before he died? He may have. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I think we keep Sean Connery. But it's like I mentioned before. I think we have him as Sherlock Holmes. Okay. And I think that sets the right tone. Sure. I, and I think that helps. That informs and helps audiences with what we're actually doing. Here. Well, maybe here's a, here's another question then. What time period do we set this in? Because remember, this can be at any time. Um, I know this is a weird thing to say, but I think we all know that World War One is like no one cares about World War One. It's the boring one. Like yes. you know, it's more you know World War One is a little confusing because it's overshadowed by oh yeah, here were the bad guys for World War Two, and here were the good guys. Holy oh, yeah. crap! Because yeah. it's a lot. It's a much bigger, grander, and easier story than. World War One, sure. So I mean, placing it during World War Two is cool. Yeah, but I don't know who to who the characters how do would we, be. Well, how do we explain Sherlock Holmes still being alive? Though? Well, I don't. I mean, that's the thing. I don't. I, I think we have to figure out the time period first, and then figure out who our characters are second. Oh, okay. Or like, if it's Sherlock Holmes, it's got to be you know, in the late nineteen hundreds. Yeah. We gotta have the a different, late, yeah. The late 1800s, you mean? No, no, it's the 1900s. What? Because it's it's uh, yes, it's one ahead of it. It's the it's the 19th century, so it's like late 1900s. Well, no, if it's the 19th century, it's late 19th century. It's the 1800s. Right, right before let's the turn of the century. Eight, let's just say 1800s. Okay. Because yeah, because the 21st century. We're in the 21st century. Sure. We were born in the 20th. Yep. This movie would take place probably in the 19th. Okay. Copy that. That, I, that shouldn't be hard. I know. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be hard. But yeah, it's the centuries went ahead of where we are. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, I, then I'm not sure who our main character is. I'm not sure. I mean, honestly, if that... Uh, right? Because this, this is hard. Then I think we just keep it in the same time period. Okay. I mean, I, Turn of I the am, century, then. Yeah, and I, I think if we just if we make our bad guys a little bit more specific, I don't think that's a problem. Sure. What if it's Rasputin? It's got to be. I mean, it's got to be. It's got to be. It's got to be Rasputin. It's got to be Rasputin, or something, or something puppeting Rasputin. Like I mean. Here is an idea I had when I was watching the movie. It's like, this is fine and I'm having fun, but like, I don't care about any of these characters. And this idea is interesting, but like, this thread is nebulous, right? Like, it's just yeah. cars and subs and, su- you know, suits of ar- mechanical uh, suits of armor art. It's like, this is not. I, I'm, I can go with you for a, a certain distance, but like, turn of the century, like, I'm sorry, but like, that's not flamethrowers. We weren't there yet, guys. Like, even if you, like, I... I don't know. I was okay with that. It was more that the suits looked stupid. Oh. I that's... can get behind that you have any kind of tech if you make it look cool. That okay. submarine was wildly before its time. But A, that was kind of the thing. Sure, And sure. B, it was cool. But also, like, you know, if you're going to have Nemo in there, you got to make it... If, he's, if his tech is his thing, he needs to have more tech on his person. Fair enough. It needs to be if he's the Iron Man of this outfit, he's got to have mm-hmm. more going on. Well, I mean, I think I think Rasputin needs to be the bad guy. Okay, because that is a character everybody knows about. Sure, he also has some powers because he cannot be killed. Yeah, he's Russian. Sure. So that's you know for a Western audience, like oh he's bad, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's easy. Um. Uh, so you know, rest. You know, I mean, just the kind of the plot kind of writes itself. If, if Rasputin's the bad guy, he's just trying to destabilize Europe and have Russia, you know, take over control of the uh, of Moscow or Saint Petersburg at that time, I believe. Yeah, I think okay. 
if we're going to tie this into classic literature, mm -hmm. I feel like Rasputin's plan. Yes. He is. Uh, he has taken uh, the main character um, from H.G. Uh, Wells's classic, The Time Machine. And he is trying to. He has basically created an, an army of Morlocks from the time machine and is trying to utilize them, all these, like, you know, lizard creatures from the future to try to take over the present. Or create, like, some kind of... You know what I'm saying? You just fixed the one problem I had in my head of... We know we have a bunch of famous literary heroes, but they're all in different time periods. Yes. Not anymore. Yeah, because if we can get H.G. Wells as the time machine... And we can, and we can recruit, uh, we can recruit across time, for literary heroes for the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Hell, it could even it could even be this. We can, it can be established the status quo is that they know every once in a while a time machine is going to pop up and they're going to have to go do something and they'll get put back right at the same time. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like it's. It's almost like, ah, yep, here we go. To adventure. So, yeah. So, if that's the case, then we could put it in World War II and just go nuts. So, I think we have we have Sean Connery as Sherlock Holmes. Okay. Um, An older Sherlock to help figure everything out. And he's the, he's the brain slash the leader. He's our quote-unquote, like, Iron Man to some mm -hmm. degree for this thing. Or Fury. Sure. Sure. Um, I think we need, like, I think if we're putting together, oh, maybe that's how we make, um, that is how, that is how we make Tom Sawyer the main character. Okay. He's investigating. We have, like, maybe, like, these, the league, like, meets, like, every couple of years just to, like, just to meet in, like, a meeting place. Sure. Like, e like to meet up without having a mission or anything like that, just to, like... Okay. Get the status quo, just so they can be, like... Just, you know, how you mm -hmm. have general meetings sometimes. Sure. Um, general meeting? Hello? Um, and he, like, he is... He is... Has done a lot of, like, research, you know, across time about all these people and blah, 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 blah. And, like, he, like, infiltrates this meeting and, like, you know... Basically, it's like, I, I want to join up Tom Sawyer. And they're like, who? And he's like, ah, oh, Twain? And they're like, nah. No, we didn't. Uh, we, a lot of us are before that time. And they're like, he's like, oh, you're going to love it. It's pretty good. It's like painting fences and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So we have Tom Sawyer is our, is our uh, audience surrogate. Mm -hmm. And I think we give him a power. I think he's like long shot. I think he's just like, things just work out for him in a way that is in a supernatural way. He's just always just lucky. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's been done in movies before. It has. It has. I mean, he could be Mr. Just hit your shots. You know, you could, you know, know the trajectory of things, be able to bounce stuff off, be a, be a trick shot artist. Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, I can dig that. Something like with a, just, our, you know, our yeah. dead shot kind of situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I had some. I had some uh, some interesting character ideas. Okay. What What if? Okay. First okay. and foremost, I think mm -hmm. we get there is a, and this is our chance to get some kind of bombshell because it's still two thousand and three. You got to have a pretty lady. That's you do. Just, how it works. In, and in, there was a very pretty lady in this movie. In the 90s and 2000s, it was just like, they're like, well, let's we'll just, that's, that's how movies work. Um, I think we, we have, movies still work that way, Jay. <laughs> I, I guess. It just doesn't seem as egregious. You okay. know what I'm saying? That sure. was one thing that frustrated me about this movie. That was like, I was like, man, every time she's in a room, these guys are just fighting over her in a way that's like, just, it's a, it's a lot. Sure. I mean, but a, she was an extremely sexy, smart vampire lady. That's a lot of... Okay. And this one, she checks not, a lot of boxes, Jay. Uh, she's <laughs> not She's not a vampire. Sure. She, she's blonde. Okay. Um, 
and she we come to find out has the ability to uh like uh portal project uh, a la blink from x-men okay um and it is alice from alice in wonderland okay right. we're getting freaky okay we're going weird let's we're going go weird. weird we're going let's, weird okay because the mirrors characters. i'm with you i see you mm-hmm. i see okay okay yeah she can portal project or like you know or go through any reflective surface. she's like a mirror master yeah yeah and it's just like yeah like you know i i kind of spooked my uncle and he wrote this book it's like oh okay cool she asked me where i went and i was like uh yeah i do go to up yeah i do go to yeah i I lied a lot about where i went um but it's pretty it's actually pretty boring in there (laughs) it's like oh that's a great idea okay or or where she travels through is another dimension that is completely insane that's why she doesn't want to stay there very long yeah and we can get her like taking out like a you know a mini boss by like you know opening that portal in a weird way mm-hmm. um okay so we have her i'm not sure what her de- like and maybe maybe her traveling through is she's losing she is losing her tether on her on her mental stability okay like maybe it's maybe it is you know to quote uh, to quote the Cheshire Cat, like we are all mad here, like okay, so it comes with the cost. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then okay, I think I want to. I, I think there is something to. I think Dorian Gray could very well be in this movie. I think Dorian Gray is a big enough name, and I think it's an interesting enough. He is. He just yeah, making him the bad. Or, you know, the bad guy was kind of like oh well. I guess we we just lost our ability to like see him interact and be really a character anymore he's gonna be yeah i i don't mind having him in the care in the thing but he needs to be like a main guy yes because he's our our immortal yeah and i yeah i think he's the immortal and if we wanted to go another immortal um i think you can have i think you can have peter pan i think you can go peter pan Wow. And, he, and herein lies the issue is that Disney has like kind of just dipped its finger in all of the public domain stuff that's worth sure. dipping your finger in. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to not get a Disney vibe from it. And they're, mm-hmm. and they're like, well, of course, it worked. Ha ha. Like that was their plan all along. Um, but I don't think Peter Pan totally fits. Um, so, so Alice th- fits more than Peter Pan. Yes. I, I think I think Dorian Gray stays. Okay. Um, now this is a wild one. <laughs> it's not the wildest one, but it's a wild one. Okay. I think we just, I think, I think Edgar Allan Poe is just there. Not the, not the, any of his books, just the writer of his, of the books. Okay. And I, and I think, and I think he can talk to birds. <laughs> I think he's got crow power or he's got raven powers. <laughs> this one's a little bit of a stretch but he's got raven powers a little bit a little bit i don't I mean, know he, if it he, totally works i mean he has kind of become a character in and of himself yeah i mean sure we can put a question mark by him peter pan you know peter submitted pan his application enough. and we rejected it yeah uh Ed, okay. edgar Allan poe's on the wait list sure okay yeah. Um, but older Sherlock Holmes, Dorian Gray, Alice, and uh, 20s Tom Sawyer are in. Okay. Right? We're at, we're at four right now. Yeah. Okay. We got a time machine. Who else are we getting? We got time machine guy. Yeah, but he's kind of... I think maybe No, no, he, he, no we have a time machine, so who else are we getting? Now, we don't have no, a time saying, machine guy. We have guy. a character... We he, got, he got kidnapped by the bad guys. No, but I'm saying I think in the process of the movie, he gets kidnapped. Oh, I, that could be the inciting incident. That's the inciting incident. I yeah, think. I think I think um, he gets... What's um, that character's name? Uh, the, oh, does the guy it from, have a character? Oh, from the time machine? Oh, yeah, yeah the, the main character has, has a name. Has a name. 
I don't think it's really that iconic, though. I no, but like, you can just say that he built a time machine. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I think he's, like, kind of their leader. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Okay. He's the one that got them all together. Is he? I, I think my, in this. It, in my head, he's... Tom Sawyer, the, the American government, is like, hey, we heard... Scuttlebutt that uh, an Englishman is maybe messing around with something he shouldn't be. Maybe we should have someone go check that out. So I'm plucky young Tom Sawyer. Yeah. I go check it out, and he sees Rasputin kidnapping. Oh, no. See, I, I like I said, I think he, he stumbles upon a meeting of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And uh, in, that, in, in that meeting, in that situation, we see, um, like, their base gets invaded and... You know, Rasputin's men take take the time machine. Okay. And him. Because he knows how to drive it. He doesn't have a name. No, the I didn't think he did. The time I traveler. Think he did. The time traveler, yeah. Hmm. Weird. Um But yeah, but but the good guys and the bad guys both have to have access to the time machine. Do you have any ideas for more fun characters? Well, I mean, Famous characters from pop culture. I mean, I, but I think classic novels is kind of what we're going for here. I will. I'll, I will say this. I think Dorian Gray is strong enough to stay. Sure. I, and you're going to disagree with me on this. I think Nemo is strong enough to stay. Okay. But I he definitely it, needs more of a glow up. They he than needs just more of a glow up. guy. Because mm-hmm. they did some small stuff. I liked it when he was like, you know, in when he was in front of that altar and they were like, he worships the god of death. Like, what is that about? I was like, I want to know all about that. And he was also kind of strong in a way. I was like, I think if you give him more of a, like, he's got really cool tech, like cool future tech. I think that works. Or steampunky, steampunky tech. Steampunky tech. I'm into that too. And this, okay, this is my craziest one. This is my last one that I think could work. Okay. We have a kind of a younger, uh, like a like maybe early twenties, um, uh, young brunette guy, uh, who has uh, the ability, um, who has the ability to basically make make everyday objects sentient. Um. And he was, and they're like, "How? Where did you learn how to do this?" And he's like, "Oh, uh, I just spent a lot of time in the Hundred Acre Wood." It's Christopher Robin, and he can bring and because the 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 uh, the stuffed animals of like Winnie the Pooh and Piglet and Tigger and all them they actually are real. That was an actual kid with actual stuffed animals, and I like the idea that he can bring them to life. And, like, all of the stories that were written were things that actually happened because they were actually real. Okay. Is that a bit, is that maybe a bridge too far for old Adam Lash? I, just a little bit. It's a, it's a, it's a bridge to Terabithia. Yeah. You it's gotta, a, it's, you gotta admire the creativity. I man. absolutely do. He Toy story those things. Yes, he's, yeah, he's got Toy Story powers. I don't think that works. It's but. just, with the magic, yeah, it's just, it's the magic is just one step slightly too far sure sure but also we don't need the team to be all that big no we don't the, actually the, the fewer numbers the better i mean i'm already in when you have sean connery playing an old surly sherlock holmes sure yeah like i'm fine with that up against rasputin trying to take over russia and then dominate europe yeah. because he can see where it's coming he's just ha- yeah. you know he's, he's rasputin he's he's the mad titan no, yeah, that's that's Thanos, but he's also just the the Mad Monk, the Mad Monk. Yeah, and Rasputin uh, is a strong enough bad guy. Yeah, but like, is there anything is there anything literary wise that he could steal from time other than just getting the Morlocks back? Like that's the thing. I mean, there's the Spear of Destiny. There's the Holy Grail. There's even if we want to go religious, there's I mean, no one still no one's ever done the Spear of Time or Spear of Destiny. They teased it in that last Indiana Jones movie, and I was kind of pissed they teased about it and didn't actually do it. But yeah, because um, that's just 
right freaking there for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, but the spear is pretty good. Yeah. But I mean, again, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be too complicated. No, I think you can keep it really simple because I want to know about these characters and I want to know about their backstory and I want to know all that stuff. And it's like, you know, I think you can have, maybe that's the whole thing with Tom Sawyer is that like, and I think that's why you make their books diegetic. Okay. Is that so, like, maybe you, maybe that's the thing. Maybe is like, yeah, like this old guy wrote stories about like me growing up, but like, I'm not special. And so, like, that's, like, him trying to figure, like, him trying to find his own value. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Hmm. That's actually so not bad. So, it's Tom Sawyer, 20s, somewhere in his 20s, Tom Sawyer. Yeah. Older Sherlock. Alice with Portal Powers. Dorian Gray. And Captain Nemo. Yeah. That's, that's our main five. I okay. think that's perfect. I think that's it. I Versus right. a time a time traveling Rasputin who abused uh, the time traveler's machine to get an army of future Morlocks. To uh, we have to rescue the time traveler. I think because yeah. everyone. I think everyone. Can, we have a six member who's not there, and because uh, everyone there can be kind of like, that's pretty much all on the same ish time ish period, right? Yeah. So like, so what? Good guys don't have to time travel. He's got to stop a time traveler. Or yeah. so someone trying to abuse time. Yeah. And they're able to do that. Do yeah. wacky hijinks. And they save the time traveler. But the time tech gets out. Yeah, maybe the bad guys are Edgar Allan Poe and Christopher Robin. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe, you know, maybe Sherlock Holmes gets pecked to death by a bunch of birds. Oh, my God. But he's like, never more. Ah! <laughs> and then, you know? Sure. And he burns them with his magical... Uh, uh, magnifying glass. <laughs> that's your like powers. Just, home, that's your like Holmes' plays, powers, right? Yeah, yeah. Or just you know, be able to do crazy things on heroin. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So you sci-fi it up a little bit. Better characters. The action was great. It remains the same, and we have less characters so that we can. Spend a little bit more time with them so we get to know them a little bit more. And we introduce our audience surrogate a lot sooner so we can get to know these characters a lot quicker. Yes. Like, because starting I with know. Alan Quartermain is like, you guys know who this is, right? Like, No. 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 And and I, I could see them trying to do their due diligence, but they also just didn't do enough in order to... Oh, they didn't. In order Not at for all. us to really know what he's... Mm-mm. Um... It makes you want to read Alan Quartermain books, though. A, because that's a good name, and B... It is a I good mean, name. Clearly clearly there was something there. Mm-hmm. Huh. And I think having the bad guys tar- time travel and defeating Rasputin allows time travel to then open up this franchise a little bit to... Oh, an older Moriarty, because we introduced Sherlock Holmes... Yeah, gets ass uh, gets access to the plans for said time machine and like, well, now I finally have the time I've always needed to, who knows what, and then yeah. we can go from there and have a league of Robin Hood and the Musketeers and whatever oh, hell handle yeah. you know during World War Two or the War of the Roses you know just we can open this thing up. To yeah, King Arthur, man. Yeah, freaking King Arthur, man, yeah, dude. Have bring King Arthur to the to World War Two and help England. I'm writing the sequel right yeah. freaking now. Yeah, there that's you go. awesome. Done. Easy. He yeah. shows up with Excalibur to smite some freaking Nazis. Yeah, yeah man. This that's stuff's writing bad. itself. Yeah, that's not bad. Jay, bringing it to the time machine was very very smart. Well, it's also a classic novel. Like, it is a it, classic novel. Yeah, like it's it is. It, I'm shocked that every time, like every time I watch that movie, I'm like, I'm shocked they didn't include the time. I know that makes things wildly complicated, but also that book has such a rigid definition of what time travel is that, like, I feel like it's okay. Um, because he also goes to the future and it breaks. And he, it's not good. Yeah, but he was by himself, and now we have a team of English scientists who, you know. 
they cracked the Enigma uh, machine, they can figure out time travel. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're English scientists. Yeah. What can't they go, do? Let's go find Harry Potter. Let's go get him. <laughs> yeah, let's get him. He does what he did. If we're doing books, you want to see you want to see Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen kiss? Come on. I mean, here's the thing. Fanfic. Uh, in the in fifty years or so, when a bunch of this, when a bunch of the stuff that we are like, we, I know. the stuff that we like is going to be know. in the public domain. Oh no. Gonna get nuts. Do you think? Yeah, I don't. I, I think. I think copyright law will be so will be so like salted into the earth at that point that I don't think anything is. Apparently, yeah. Warner Brothers are in talks to buy, like basically do with Harry Potter what Disney did with Star Wars. Just buy it outright mm -hmm. and be in control of it, and not J.K. I think it's actually a spectacular move on their part. I mean, I can think of better production companies that could, you know, own property and IPs. Yeah, but but like, but but it would separate it would separate J.K. from from the property, and yeah. she's made it so toxic. Mm -hmm. But also from what I from the article that I read, they're just so tired of running everything by her. I would imagine <laughs> they're just so tired of it. Yeah. <laughs> they're just like, "How about we give you ten million billion dollars and we never talk to you again?" <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like, is that cool? And like, then we can finally get our horror show we've been wanting for. Yeah. There are. There's so there's, much. There, that's, there's so that much. is a world of possibility of very good yes. television. Yeah. That that world has not been even close to mind not enough. Even, not even close. Not even close. Because even, like, look, Fantastic Beasts are a bit much. But they're still Okay. You know what I mean? If anything, if anything, what frustrates me the most about that movie is that it was like, there's a lot more to this world that I want, but I feel like they're they ha they feel like they're like we only get a couple of shots at these movies, so we got to put as much as we can in here. It's like, yeah, Dumbledore didn't need to be in these movies, but but I'm not gonna get mad because it's Jude Law, and it's the handsomest he's ever looked. Mm -hmm. So I can't can't blame you for that. Whew. Okay, man, I think we did it. That was fun. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah, I've been thinking... Yeah, it makes me wonder... I might, I might, I might go buy the, the graphic novel um, just to read it, because I, I was like, oh, yeah, I actually think this is fun. I just... It's a shame I... It's a shame parts of this are lame. Yeah, just the characters. Yeah. But the action's fun, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think okay. we did it, my friend. I we, did it. we did it. Good job. Um, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Good. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It is a good movie. It's just full of characters you probably don't know that much about and probably won't know much about after you watched it. Yeah, man. Uh, what, are, what are we covering next week? What dude? are we doing next week after we get back? <sighs> this yes. is a... Next week's episode is a movie I've been waiting to do since we started this whole endeavor almost two years ago. Okay. Blade Trinity. Oh snap! Okay, we'll do. It's a watch the third one, that. which I really like. I like. I like this movie so much. I like Patton Oswalt talking about making this movie. Yes, but apparently, yes, this this movie was insane to make. <laughs> yeah, and apparently was it, Wesley Snipes was in character the entire the entire time. Mm -hmm. The entire process. But Ryan Reynolds is a lot of fun. Yeah, and. Uh, why, why am I? Jessica Biel kicked all sorts of butt in this movie. Sure did. Okay, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Yeah, that will be fun. <sighs> yeah, that's, think, I, you know, I like the movie. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, thanks for, uh, we're doing this remote. I think this actually went really well. It went decently well. It went de- <laughs> <laughs> is, is that the equivalent of me being like, oh, the Wally is successful? Eh, you know, whatever, sure. This was, ex uh, yeah. anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you're catching this on your audio uh, podcast, uh, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. Or no, that's for the, the video part. No, if you're, watch if you're listening, leave a review. There you go. Leave us five stars. If you're what? watching, like, subscribe, hit the bell. Do that YouTube that you do so well. Guacamole's Extra, you podcast watching weirdos, you. Um, as we end every single one of these episodes... Heartbreak feels good in a place like this. It's the silent, naked, invisible man <laughs> that you never see coming. 
<laughs> yeah, he brings up he's naked basically I'm, every time. Every, every time. Every time. And it's one of those things where I was like, is that too much? And I'm like, no, honestly, if I were just naked places and nobody could see me, I'd probably bring it up every time, too. Yeah, well, especially when he's like, we're in Mongolia. It's snowing outside. I'm naked. Please get out of my way. Like, <laughs> yeah, he is. He just walked three miles in the snow naked. How is he still alive? I don't know. I honestly don't know. We'll see you guys next week. This has been Rug Talk. <laughs> Bye. Bye.